Hello, I am not the pastor, and <laughs> I'm only going to give the way of salvation. Um, so it is, it's all about the way of salvation, right? Um, okay, so. In the beginning, when God created mankind, he created us in his image. In his image doesn't mean that we were created with two eyes, two nostrils, and one mouth. It's not talking about the physical image. It's talking about God is spirit, and so he made us as spiritual beings. And ultimately, because we are spiritual beings, it means that we were created to have this connection with God. It's kind of like how if a fish is out of the water, you can't survive, right? It's the same thing. If our spirits are separated from God, we cannot survive. So people think that just because they're walking around all healthy and alive means that they're okay, but they're not. And that's why you see out in the world, there are so many people out there who are burdened by their problems. But here's the thing. Do you think God created us to be burdened by our problems? He didn't. When he created us to be with him, he created us to enjoy all of these blessings. Genesis 128 says that when he blessed Adam and Eve, he gave them the blessing of ruling, subduing, of being fruitful, and increase in numbers, right? This is the blessing that God created us to have. And right now, all of the people living in this world are trying to make these own blessings. When you guys study hard, why do you study? To have money, right? Why do you want money? Because if you don't have money, you can't rule the world. You can't subdue the world, right? You don't have any power. So people think that if they have money and success, they can have this blessing. Why do you guys make friends? Because you guys don't want to be alone. Because you think having friends will make you feel safe and secure. And it will make you feel like you are included. But that's because our spirits want that blessing that we were created to be with in the first place. Which is increase in number. Right? That's the whole premise of God's blessing to us. God blessed us and said that this is what we were created to live with. Because only when we are connected with God, because we were spiritual beings, right? But right now, how many of you guys, even when you go to church, even when you believe in Jesus Christ, does it feel like you are ruling and subduing? This past week, I had a really hard time at work. And because of that, I came to church and I started crying. I cried at Tiffany. I cried at Tim. I, I like, attacked people. Why is that? I have the gospel, but why is it that I couldn't enjoy this blessing? Well, it's because fundamentally, God and people are now separated. But why are we separated from God, right? That's what we have to ask ourselves. And in the beginning, there was Satan. Satan went into Adam and Eve, and he, what did he, uh, in, to Adam and Eve, and what did he do? He told them a lie. God said, hey, you need to be with me. And in order for you to be with me, you have to not eat this fruit. That is my promise to you. If you eat this, you will die. But what Satan said was, actually, you're not going to die. Actually, you can be like God. And how many of you guys struggle with that? Before this message, Pastor Park told me that I was too strong of a person. And that's why I suffer. He said that I have a hard time because I'm too strong, meaning that I think that I know what's best, right? I think, oh, Fanny, Fanny messed up. That's not good. Oh, Jacob, Jacob messed up. That's not good. And so I will look to other people and determine what is good and evil. And that is exactly the lie that Satan told Adam and Eve, which is that you can be like God, knowing the difference between good and evil, right? So everybody is born with this sin. When we are born, we are all born with this sin because of the original sin that got passed down from Adam and Eve. But what does this sin do? This sin separates us from God. In Isaiah, it says that our iniquities 
turn, or like hide us from God, right? It means that God can't see us because of our sins, right? And this is what you call the three fundamental problems, the three spiritual problems. These are the problems that you can't see, but these are the problems that is the source of all problems. What do I mean by that? Because of these three problems, there are certain things that result. The first thing is that in John 8, 44, it says that you belong to the father, your devil, right? That's a really strong word for God to say to us. You belong to your father, the devil. But what does that mean? It means that we were created to be with God and to joy, enjoy his blessings and in, to, to enjoy his power and authority, to enjoy his guidance and his leadership. But instead, because God can't be by us, right? Now, who's controlling us? Satan. And we see this in Ephesians 2, verse 1 through 2, when it says, when you're a sinner, you follow after what you want to do, right? And so essentially, it means that you do idol worship. Why do you do idol worship? Because Satan is tricking you into thinking, hey, you need to make these blessings for yourself. You need to be happy by yourself. And so Satan, for yourself, makes you do idol worship. Idol worship is just saying, I know what's better. God said this, but I don't need God. I can make my own decisions. I can make my own blessings. I can live without God. That is idol worship. And pretty much um, because of this idol worship, what happens? We fall into mental suffering, right? Because the thing is, so many people, so many people think that, oh, money, success, power, friendship, love. What else is there? Good grades, good education, good family. People think that these are the things that will make them happy. But then they get to that success point or they get that money or they get that, you know, significant other or they get that beautiful family and their problems don't go away. They still have these problems and they don't have these blessings. So what happens? They live their whole lives thinking that they have the answer, and then when they get to that answer, it's not the answer, right? So they have no choice but to fall into mental suffering. And that's why in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus Christ said, come to me all who you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. The thing is, we cannot find that peace, we cannot find that rest unless it is Jesus Christ. But because we can't find it, people fall into depression, right? Why do you think rich people commit suicide? Why do you think powerful, famous people, even though the entire world loves them, they feel lonely? For example, Marilyn Monroe, she was beloved by everybody in the world. She was the successful lady of that era, and she committed suicide. Why? Because mankind cannot create these blessings on their own. Mankind cannot be happy and peaceful on their own. And so even when you have money and even when you have success, you have no choice but to mentally suffer. And when you mentally suffer, what happens? When you mentally suffer, you get the physical illnesses, right? So let me give you an example. When someone is depressed, for a long time, and they can't overcome their depression, what happens? It turns into suicide, right? And when people are angry and they are resentful for a long time and they can't control it, what happens? They turn to violence. They turn to fighting. They turn to killing other people, right? So that's what happens. Even when you're stressed for a long time, it turns into physical reactions in your body. For example, my mom, she's a very hard worker. She's worked so hard the entire life, and she always has this thing of like, I have to succeed. I have to do well. But because she has all of this pressure, even because she has all of this stress, she has constant migraines. She's always sick. And the thing is, she went to the doctor, they put shots inside of her brain, they like did CT scans, MRIs, and the doctors can't figure out what it is, right? 
And there are so many things like that where we think that it's just a physical problem, but it's actually a problem of our spiritual state that leads to the mental suffering that eventually manifests into the physical suffering. And people think that, oh, well, when I die, that's it. I don't care how I live my life, I'll just die. But in Hebrews 9.27, it says that, no, actually, even after you die, there's a judgment that happens afterwards, right? Meaning that if, you have, if you're a sinner and you don't have Christ, then you have to go to hell, right? And that is eternal. And then some people that I talk to, they say, well, fine, I'll go to hell, whatever. That's my problem, right? Like, why do you care? That's my problem. But actually, it's not just your problem because... In Exodus 20, verse 5, God said that he's going to curse the next generations after you, right? Meaning that all of the problems that you hated about your parents, you're going to have. And the thing is, I'm starting to find that out too, right? All of the problems that you hate about your family members and about your parents, as much as you guys hate it right now, if you don't find an answer in Jesus Christ, you're going to be like that too, because I'm beginning to see that in myself. (laughs) So these are the problems that the world is living in right now. People go deeper and deeper into their problems because they can't overcome their suffering, right? And so you see so many people who are addicted nowadays, right? It's not just drugs. Like the students, you guys will know, there's a lot of drug use, right? There's a lot of vape use. But even if it's not drugs or substances, How many of you guys have friends who are addicted to their phones? How many of you guys are addicted to your phones, right? Actually, there is a remnant in this room (laughs) who on Saturday I asked, hey, what do you do when you have a hard time? And that remnant said, I don't remember when I have a hard time. (laughs) And why is that? It's because that remnant used the phone to drown out their thoughts right, to make sure that they can't feel it or think about it, and so they just push it all away. But as you get older, as the problems pack, on, pack itself on, as the pressures of society come on to you, it's more and more pressure. It's more and more stress. So what do people do? That's why people turn to drugs. That's why people turn to alcohol. Right now, for you guys, the easiest access is your mangas, is your comic books, it's your, future, it's your phones and social media. But as you get older, that's why you begin to see these problems in society. So what is this answer? How do we get out of here? And how do we solve the fundamental problems that lead to this? Because even if you solve this problem, If you don't solve the fundamental problems, you're going to keep going back into these problems. So God loved us so much, and God created us to live in this blessing that once we became separated, in Genesis 3.15, he made us a promise. He made us a promise that he's going to send the woman, uh, the, the child of the virgin, right? That's Jesus Christ. So in Matthew 16, 16, In Matthew 16, 16, Simon Peter confessed that Jesus, you are the Christ, right? Jesus, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Christ means that Jesus played the roles of three things, and that is the true king, the true priest, and the true prophet, Meaning that in 1 John 3, 8, the reason why the Son of Man appeared is to destroy the devil's work. It's kind of like the king of a kingdom, right? When an enemy attacks, do you think the king just stays there and just goes, okay, well, I guess people are attacking? No, the king protects the nation, right? The king sends out the forces, the troops to protect the nation. And that's exactly what Jesus Christ did. Satan is constantly attacking us. Satan is constantly deceiving us, saying, hey, you can be like God. You can do whatever you want. You are God. But Jesus Christ came as the true king to protect us from Satan and his lies. And so he crushed the the work of the devil. He destroyed Satan's authority. So now we don't have to live being attacked by Satan all the time. We have a way out of that. 
And as the true priest, what did he do? It said that he paid the ransom for our sins, right? And that was what we learned today in the pulpit message. The pulpit message said that we were liberated from the law of sin and death, and we were brought into the law of life. What does that mean? It means that if you have sin, you die. That is the law, period. I know the law. <laughs> so let me tell you, when there is no wiggle room in the law, especially the law of God, there is no like, eh, maybe sometimes you sin and you're okay. No, if you sin, you die. That is the law. But Jesus Christ died for us so that we don't have to pay that ransom of death. We don't have to pay anymore. And by his blood, we are set free from the law of sin and death. We are set free from the curses and disasters that come from our sin. So as the true prophet, what did he do? As the true prophet, he, Jesus Christ says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes through the Father except through me. Right? Meaning that way that was once separated from God, when our iniquities, in Isaiah 59 2, it says your iniquities hide you from God. Well, now, Jesus Christ, he is the way. So if we, if we believe in Jesus Christ, we have that way to be with God. And if we have that way to be with God, then we are restored back to enjoying the blessings that we were created to be in. And that is why as the, as, excuse, that is why as the Christ, Jesus finished all of our fundamental problems. Now, what do we do with this information? Who cares? What happens now? Well, when you confess that Jesus is your Christ, when you confess that only Jesus can liberate me from these problems, <laughs> in John 1.12, what does it say? When you believe in the name Jesus Christ, you become a child of God, right? And... When you become a child of God, and that means that the creator God who created you to enjoy these blessings, he has so much for you, right? It's kind of like the same thing. I'm an adult. I'm 33 years old. It's so hot, sorry. Is my face swinging? Even though I'm an adult, I get scared, and the first thing that I do is I call my dad right? Like I get in a car accident. I don't call the police. I call my dad. <laughs> or like, dad, I got in an accident. What do I do? Right? Now, a few weeks ago, someone broke into my car. Someone broke into my car and it was parked on the street and someone broke the window and like opened the door and it was open. And I was freaked out. And I was like, and instead of calling the police, I called my dad. And I, my dad's in Seattle. He can't come help me. He can't do anything. But I'm like, Appa, what do I do? <laughs> right? And that's God. God gave us the right to call him God and Father because we have Jesus Christ. So now God, who controls the entire universe, has your back. He's looking after you. He's protecting you, right? And then what did he promise? In John 14, 26, he said that he's going to send the Spirit of God. He's going to spend, send his Holy Spirit to be with you, right? So before in the Old Testament, somebody had to be like chosen and then like they poured oil on it. And only then was God with them to do their work, right? But now because Jesus Christ is inside of you, you have the Spirit of God inside of you. Meaning God is guiding you 24-7, Oh, uh, so in John, <laughs> yeah. So in John, um, in John fourteen twenty six, it says that the Holy Spirit is going to be with you, and He's going to guide you, and teach you, and remind you, right? Because the thing is, you remnants, you guys have heard all of this before, but when a problem comes to you, it's hard to remember, right? It's hard to forget about your anger, and it's hard to remember about these blessings, right? But that's why God says, hey, it's okay, you can't do it. That's why my spirit has to be with you. That's why my spirit has to guide you and remind you and teach you, 
right? And that's what we have the blessing of. Anything we don't understand, if we have a problem, actually, I should say this to myself because I have a problem right now. And I'm like, oh, why? But instead of why, if I ask God, why? <laughs> right? <laughs> what is your plan? What is your answer? Then God said he's going to guide me through that problem. God said he was going to give me the word and he's going to guide me through that problem. And that's such a blessing, right? But it's not only that, but in John 15, 17, Jesus Christ says, if you remain in me and my words remain in you, then ask for anything you wish and it will be given to you, right? And that's a promise that your answer, prayers will be answered, right? It's not, oh, if I ask God for anything, he's going to give it to me. But it's if you remain in Christ and if Christ's words remain in you, then that means if you pray, God will answer you. That is a promise. How many of you guys talk to your parents and you feel like your parents don't understand or your parents don't care about what you think? I used to think that all the time. Like, my parents don't care about what I think. They don't know who I am, <laughs> right? And I'm sure you remnants are thinking the same thing. But you know what? God cares. God knows who you are. And God says he's listening and he's answering your prayers, right? What a blessing. God is way better than our parents, isn't he? <laughs> and then what did he say? In Hebrews 1.14, in Hebrews 1.14, he says, I'm going to send my angels to protect you, to fight against the forces of darkness who's constantly trying to attack you. I'm going to send the angels to do my work for you, right? And then not only that, when you pray for somebody else, God will send those angels to help that somebody else, right? So for example, if you are having problems with somebody else, far away and if you say God in the name of Jesus Christ I bind the forces of darkness on that person on that place then God is going to send his angels and bind the forces of darkness in that place even though you never go right and that's another blessing that we have been given as a child of God and then what happens after we have answered prayers we what is the authority that Jesus Christ gave us. In Luke 10, 19, Jesus Christ says, I give you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. I heard this in one of Pastor Park's messages once, but snakes and scorpions, they bite you, right? And then they put poison into you, and then the poison spreads, and then you die. That's kind of like Satan. Satan attacks you, right? And then he, he like bites you, and then, and then slowly, that sin, that lie that he poked into you, it starts spreading. And then it spreads into your thoughts. And you try to say to yourself, no, it's stupid for me to think that way. No, that's a stupid thought. But instead, you keep getting overtaken by your thoughts, right? How many of you guys know what it feels like to not be able to control your thoughts? I was like that all week. I knew what I was thinking was stupid, and I knew that that's not how the people around me meant it. But once that poison of Satan like kicks in, it spreads. There's nothing that can stop it except for the antidote. And what is the antidote? It is the name of Jesus Christ and the authority that Jesus Christ gave us to trample on the scorpions and snakes, right? That means before the snake and scorpion can even bite you, you just step on it, <laughs> right? So you don't have to give Satan the, the opportunity to bite you because you could just be like, Satan, be gone in the name of Jesus Christ, and that's the authority that we have, right? That's amazing. And then what happens? Do you think that, oh, I'm just going to live a terrible life. I'm just going to be like, whatever, and then go to hell? No, you don't have to go to hell anymore. Because why? Your citizenship is in heaven, right? Your citizenship is in heaven, meaning that after you die, you get to go to heaven. And you get to enjoy true peace, true happiness all the time for eternity. But here's the thing. You have that blessing to enjoy it right now, right? And then what happens? We do world evangelism. We have been given the blessing of world evangelism, right? There's a Bible verse. I don't know the Bible verse, but it says that <laughs> when you... Um, when you Break down the um, kingdom of Satan, and when you establish the kingdom of oh, wait, no, when you establish the kingdom of God with the Holy Spirit, that's when the forces of darkness crumble, right? They are broken down, and that's the blessing that you've been given. 
you, instead of living under all of these problems, instead of living trapped by Satan and the lies that he gives you, you have the blessing of being able to enjoy these blessings, enjoy being with God, and then you have the blessing of giving that life to other people. And that's exactly what today's pulpit message was about too. God doesn't just want you to have that life for yourself. He doesn't want you to have that spiritual freedom by yourself. God calls you to give that spiritual freedom to your school teachers, to your friends, to even your enemies, right? To give them true freedom from the real problem. If you guys are fighting with a friend because you don't like that friend, you have to imagine that friend has no choice but to suck because that person is a slave to Satan. That person is doing what that he or she knows how to do, which is just suffer by themselves. And because they suffer, they spread that suffering. But you, you are free from that because of Jesus Christ. And you have been given the mission of doing world evangelism. And guess what? In Matthew 28, 18 through 20, Jesus Christ says, I have all power and authority under heaven and earth, and I'm going to be with you. So you go to all nations and make disciples. You go and baptize people in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you go give that freedom from Satan, right? And in doing all of that, God said he's going to give you everything that you need. You think you need money? God will give you money. You think you need friends? God will give you friends. You think you need something else? Whatever it is, God will give you just because you are the one who are called to do world evangelism. So all of you remnants, I really hope that you guys ask God to really make this message yours because this message is the only way that you will be freed from Satan and his lies and the only way for you to free other people from Satan and his lies. <laughs>